this video we're going to expand on the previous two videos that we've already taken a look at and what we're going to do is go into Maya and we're going to create a high resolution cube by using a bevel in the modeling functions within there then we'll go ahead and export that out of Maya and we'll import that into UE5 and then there's a method that we can select all of our low resolution cubes or proxy meshes and then we can replace them with the high resolution cubes that we've made inside of Maya. Okay, well let's go ahead and take a look at this and let's get started. Okay, here we are inside of Maya and we have the previous cube that we have before, which actually has a pretty good amount of uh, geometry on it just because we've added the divisions that were within through here like this. Um, what we're gonna do is I'm gonna hide this cube, just select it and hit Control H and that exists under display. There's hide and show for the different things so we can hide selection or we can show selection. So there's the visibility component of that. Let's go back to create polygon primitives. Let's do a cube and let's do the option box for this. And let's just go ahead and um, use the settings we had before for a width, height, and depth of 100. So go ahead and hit apply for that. And if you remember, we were able to move this up 50 units. So you can either go to the channel box that exists over here and you can type in 50 if you want, or you could just raise this up and hold down X and you should be snapping to the grid as long as uh, I don't move that forward. Let's see here. If I push this back, so just put that to zero, move this back to 50. That did not work so well. Okay, so again, uh, if I hold down X, then I should just be able to snap that up. And what we are doing at that point, just so you know, we're holding on X and we're temporarily turning on uh, snap to grid. There's snap to curve and there's also snap to points or vertices. So that's a possibility um, as well. So here we have our cube. It's in the right position. If you remember what we did before, we said modify freeze transformations just to zero out the transforms on this. And then we went and said modify um, reset transformations. The other thing that we can do is we can tap D and we can move the pivot point to anywhere we want. So what I was telling you is if we hold down X, we temporarily snap to grid. If we hold down V, we temporarily snap to vertices. So we can actually take that center point and we could snap it to this um, vert that's right here. And then we could tap D again and that puts us back into our regular mode. Now, if we export this out, I do believe the pivot point is still going to be at the origin of the world there. But if we held down X, we could snap to the grid and then we can move over here. So if you wanted to have, again, like a Lego wing system and you wanted that to start at the origin of the world. And then if you held down shift with X, you could move this over like this. So you can see we could clone and then we could get perfectly snapped and aligned objects for that. Okay, so I'm just going to hit undo to get back to the point we were at here. And we're just going to use the thing that we did before, modify reset transformations. And we should have the um, pivot point now set at the origin of the world. Okay, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to select our edges. So we are in object mode right now and we can move the entire object around like this. It's possible that we can right click over the model and we can say edge. And if we select our edges, we can move our edges like so. Let me see if I've got, and I do believe I do, the reason this behavior is happening, I believe I have symmetry turned on. So if I double click the move settings for this, and if we go under symmetry settings, I'll turn this off. And then now you can see the behavior that I'll get is more like what I was expecting. Okay, so we have the possibility to move edges and we can rotate them like this too. We could rotate it like this. And then rotating an edge is basically the same thing as if we right click over here and we say um, vertex. And the reason it popped up joints is because joints take precedence over things. So just be careful about that. We have joints on here. So right click on here and I was able to say vertex. And if I select two vertices like this, I can rotate them around. And it's basically the same thing we're doing with an edge. So because an edge, this edge has these two verts on there, these two verts basically equals like the same thing as um, an edge. So it just depends on what you want to use for this uh, to move things around, right? So if I hold on X, I could snap this in and I could have a very specific uh, shape like this. The other thing that we could do is right click over the model make sure you're not over joints, but we'll go to face. And if we selected a face, we can move this entire face like this. We can rotate the face. We can move it up, down. 
Um, so you have options like that to kind of alter the model. But what I want to get to is the modeling operation. I want to get to the bevel function, and that exists within edges. So if I right click on here and say edge, if I drag a marquee over the entire object, and like I was saying, uh, joints take precedence over that. So you might just select the mannequin, hit control H just to do the modeling part. Um, so again, we can right click, and we can say edge, or we can hit F10. And so after I hit F10, I'm just gonna drag a marquee around the entire cube like this. And let's go ahead and hit shift and then right click and we can get to this bevel edge. And we can do the option box for this. So this will bring up the options for beveling these edges that you see here. We can also use under edit mesh, bevel, and then option box within here. You can see the hotkey for that is control B. So um, I'm just going to reset the settings. You should have exactly what you have here. Let's go ahead and hit apply and you can see what these settings are going to give us. And if we don't like the results, we can still uh, change some of this stuff. So you see we've got a poly bevel. And if this uh, little interface goes away on you, you can go select your edges. You can go to the channel box over in here and select the inputs, select the poly bevel, and you should be able to get this little dialog box to pop back up. So we can click and drag the fra uh, fraction. So that's going to tell us like how, how wide this bevel is going to be. And if you hold down control while you drag that, you get more interactive control over that. I'm going to put this at 0.1 like this. And then the next thing I'm going to do is take the segments and you can see we can dial this up or down like this and through here. And so I'm just going to put two and I want to use values that will allow me to have uh, the same amount of geometry on each one of these sides. So you can see if I double click the edges on here like this, and if I split this thing apart, I would still have an even amount of topology on the top bottom front, back, and uh, left and right of this. So to get back to this, let me go here. So you can see if I did a segments of three, we've got one face on this side and two on the top. So we're not even on our geometry there. So just pay attention to that. If you want to use four, you can do that. That'll let you have an even split through here. If you do five, we're going to be an uneven again. And if we go to six, we've got an even amount of geometry on here like that. So that's all I'm going to do for this. I'm going to do these rounded corners on here and I'm going to delete the history alt shift D or you can go up to edit delete by type and do history there. Just try to start paying attention to the different hotkeys that exist within the program if you see them um, and if you use the hotkeys it's definitely going to speed you up quite a bit. Okay, so for the name for this, I'm going to go ahead and uh, we have our old one meter cube and I'm just going to say one meter cube underscore rounded corners like that. So that's the name I'm going to give to this. I'll go ahead and save my file. I'll go ahead and select this object and let's export this thing out. So we'll select it, say file, export selection, do the option box and make sure we're on the FBX exporter type, export selection. And then I've already saved this out, but um, if, remember, if you want to steal the name from this, you might want to copy the name. And then whenever you go to export, you can just paste the name in here. And then that way you can keep your meshes consistent with the different programs and what they're named. So I'm just going to go ahead and replace that file. And then I'm going to hop on over to Unreal. And let me get rid of this. I've already uh, pulled this in here. So one thing I didn't do organizationally is take the material and put it into that material folder that we had. So that's going to be pretty easy. Let's just go ahead and click the uh, material, click and drag it into this materials folder and just tell it to move it there. So we'll just move it instead of copying it. And so now we have a new location for that. Okay. So here's our old cube and then let's right click, let's say import and we will do this uh, one meter cube rounded corners like this. And what I should do, and I didn't really pay attention to this, is um, put an SM in front of that for uh, static mesh. And uh, here's my old one. I can just type in SM on that too, just to keep myself consistent on here. So I'll go ahead and click that and hit open. And I don't want to create a material for this one because we've already got a material created. Um, I'm gonna put do not create material for this one. Let's say import all. And then if I double click on it, you can take a look and you can see this cube is going to have the default uh, Unreal material in there with the checkerboard texture because we did not uh, create a material with it whenever we brought it over. So to get that material on here, go to the material slot, this uh, folder that we've got, click on that, and then you can have it highlighted. 
and then you just hit this little arrow key and it'll say use selected asset from the content browser and then that just assign that material to, uh, to that so we can go ahead and hit save and we can close this thing down the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to select one of our cubes in the world and they've got a way that we can find the selection of this and if we have more of those in the world we can select all of them so let's go under select and then if we do select matching selected classes like this it'll go ahead and select all the different cubes uh, that we have placed within the scene and then now what we're going to do is go to our meshes we'll select the um, static mesh one meter cube rounded corners the high-res version have that selected in the content browser and if we right click over this we can say replace selected actors with and we can tell it what we want to replace it with so let's replace it with the um, this high-res version and it might take just a second and now it's populated that at that point and we have the new meshes within through here so I'm just going to go ahead and save the uh, the map and then let's just play and you can hit Alt P for that if you want and then we can take a look and we could run around and through here and everything looks to be working so what we've done is set up a little tiny pipeline for ourselves and we've made a proxy model uh, we were able to push some of that stuff into Maya uh, get a scale reference going for that take that proxy model put it into Unreal then make a new layout with that proxy model and from there we're able to make a new or high-res piece of geometry and then replace the old proxy with uh, this new high-res geometry so if you work in this way um, if you're working on a team structure you could take that proxy model and make that really early on in the process and then you hand it off to other people and other departments and they start to work with that and get that placed into the world uh, they're able to figure out gameplay and everything else like that and then whenever you're ready you can pull in that new asset that you have that's been updated and you can update it within the map pretty easily so it's a pretty nice little workflow and I would highly suggest that you get used to working in this manner especially if you're working in a team dynamic it does really help even on an individual level as well